Hey, hey hey Neil good evening i see that you're wearing uh, fresh green. clothes i'm sorry green, green. clothes okay. yeah. like both of us are wearing green coincidentally yes it's, it's not, not planned it's, it's, it's not oh planned. wow yeah. uh i mean i mean technically yeah it wasn't planned but i don't think the yeah. audience will buy it you know yeah but then it wasn't it was i don't know I, i just suddenly felt like wearing green johnny also felt like wearing green i don't know totally and that had nothing to do with the topic of today which is is christ an environmentalist clearly exactly. so <laughs> so neil i was just reading up on uh, carlo acutis our patron okay. saint and I, i i sort of came across this part which was extremely interesting and i was like whoa this 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 dude is cool he this is one of the coolest scenes that i've seen so what happened is carlo he used to go swimming and when he used to go swimming he used to make a game out of cleaning the seabed or the bottom yeah. of the river or the stream or anything so he used to make a game out of it he used to go litter hunting you know oh, when yeah. he used to go swimming and uh, another crazy thing uh, that carlo did uh, again not not exactly a very crazy thing but a very simple thing which is he used to go for walking the dogs and he used to make it a point to clean the litter in the park a very so walk the dogs so again our patron also was very much invested very much active in taking care of the environment environment in his own little way so yeah. um, that that's definitely an example which we can learn from yeah sure and uh, like even i was reading on carlo and i think i i did come across i mean the Uh, cleaning the bed was new for me but sea bed was new for me but then yeah i read a lot of the a lot of things and he's definitely one of the new gen saints that we are have in this century so we can look up to him as well so uh today uh just as you saw uh our question is is christ an environmentalist so uh today uh i think in the last minute we we published another poster which we had another person uh, apart from our main guest for the day so i think we'll welcome that person now So Johnny So uh our dear folks we have a very special person with us today you know one who will be sort of among our ranks you know who can uh who's actually experienced to in a little more experience way more experience than us to talk about this having a masters in environmental science and an MPhil in natural resource management so yeah she actually professionally studied about all these things that you know i think the a to z that concerns the environment so um uh, i welcome to the show uh rosemary uh hello 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 rose Hi. welcome to the show welcome to the catholic chai welcome to today's Thank episode you. is christ Thank and environmentalist yeah sure yes. uh yeah. pleasure she's also wearing green yeah, yeah. yes yeah. i was just listening <laughs> Pretty it was cool the only thing hanging out. Yeah, easy to just like wear. Okay, so it's like it's a coincidence that all three of us wore green, and we yeah. didn't even think about Good the episode. Okay, <laughs> I don't think the audience is going to buy that, but still, that that's the reality. Yeah, pretty okay. coincidental. Um, and uh, how are you doing today, Rose? How's things going with uh, all the pandemic and all of that? Yeah, things are going good. I am keeping myself busy with some terrace gardening and uh, helping out my father-in-law with his, uh, you know, small vegetable patch uh, behind the house and all that. Uh-huh. Yeah, got it. Keep got trying it. to keep myself busy. Yeah, like we can't go out much, right? So, got to do what's there. So I think we have the perfect person for the day. Yes, uh, who's? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hobbies are all of this. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Rosemary, we uh, we will we will slowly start with a with a song, and uh, just I think some something that Johnny missed out was Rosemary is also one of the vocalists of our Vox Christi band, so she's an amazing singer as well. So uh, today, un- unlike the other episodes where I sing, today we will have a better person singing. Okay, so uh, yes, <laughs> you can you can uh, you can start it off. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. Um... So when you asked me to like if I can like uh, sing the song that came to my mind was this uh, make me a channel of your peace uh, which I found like appropriate for uh, maybe this episode and this situation around us so yeah like okay Make me a channel of your peace where there is hatred let me bring your love 
Where there is injury, your oh, pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. Amen. 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 Yes, so we, we thank the Lord who is who is definitely the person who's responsible for all that we see around us, all the trees, the 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 the, the, the brooks, everything that we see. So uh yes, so in that light as we thank the and, and I think the first person which came into my mind was St. Francis of Assisi when I heard this song and he how how beautifully he looked after looked after nature. So uh, I think we have another St. Francis of Assisi here with us today. Uh, maybe we can call him that. Uh, so uh, yes, so we, it'll be a little different today because uh, I think people who know Bishop uh, George Paliparambil would would know that he is from a very remote village in Arunachal Pradesh called Miao. He is he's the bishop of uh, the Miao Diocese. So uh, if you've been to Arunachal and if you've been to Miao, you would have known that this is a very remote village. And yes, we have a lot of problems uh, with the network. So today we would be uh, doing our episodes in a in a little different different way. We have pre-recorded videos of all the questions that we are going to ask. But Bishop would be coming in if he is able to sort out the network. So we can expect him at any time. But yes, we have we have sorted out the issue of network also. So uh, I think we'll straight away get into the first question. So Johnny. So yeah, I think the first question uh, connected to the church, the very relevant question that we can ask is, uh, what does the Pope say about the environment and how relevant is it? So we'll, I think we'll just listen to what the Bishop has to say about it. What does the Pope teach about the environment? The Pope teaches us that the nature, God, and we are one. He takes the clue from the book of Genesis, where God tells mankind, tells our forefathers, our first parents, increase and multiply, till the earth and subdue it. God tells them to till the earth and subdue it, but not to subjugate it. The Pope further takes a clue from St. Francis Assisi, who called the nature and all that is in the nature his brothers and sisters. And he's asking us to develop an integral feeling towards nature and all that is in it, which includes human beings who are our closest brothers and sisters and travel towards God. So environment, nature, God, we are all one. This is the sum total of his teaching. Yes. So, so uh, it was very relevant what you know Bishop had to say about that, the sum total of his teaching. And the one of the very interesting things which I observed about Pope Francis, our beloved Pope, is that his first encyclical was called Laudato Si. And the whole theme of that encyclical was on the environment. You know, so many aspects that sort of cover the environment. So I think, I think all the popes and especially our Pope Francis really has a stand, really has a sort of an opinion on, especially the topic of environment. So I, yeah, I think I think the bishop has answered it perfectly well there. Yeah, and uh, something else uh, which was which was very nice, where he yeah I like before I started pointing out the example of Saint Francis of Assisi. That's that's one person who all of us can look up to. And yes, we have another Francis of Assisi as well, our Pope Francis, and and his teaching is is one of the most prominent teaching. I think uh, Rose, maybe you can add on a little bit. Maybe can you can you maybe tell us about what the practical steps as a as a, as a Christian or as a Catholic, what we can what we can do about this. Or what you practice hmm. okay so uh adding to when you were saying uh about 
uh, St. Francis. Uh, I just wanted to say, I read it somewhere um, very recently. I, or actually, when uh, Pope Francis was elected, that why he chose his name, because the topic of environment and nature is like so close to his heart, uh, close to his heart and which is another reason that motivated him to choose, take, take up that name, to take up his name specifically. Yeah. So, um, and uh, just a few days ago, uh, Pope Francis uh, also gave us like, uh, you know, he gave a TED talk about uh, the environment and uh, um, he also appreciated uh, the UN's uh, what, um, uh, World Food Program, which won the Nobel Peace Prize this year for uh, all the activities that they're doing, you know, to eliminate uh, hunger worldwide. So uh, he gave us, uh, Pope Francis has given us like this new countdown initiative. Uh, and he's calling all of us like on a three-step kind of journey. So uh, broadly, uh, it's called like um, the first first step that he's uh, given is education and the care of our common home, which is like uh, we gain knowledge ourselves and also uh, give knowledge to, to others about the environment and the problems that it is undergoing. And then uh, the second thing is fo focusing on uh, clean water and uh, nutrition so that you know uh, we can eradicate uh, poverty to a great extent if the problem of uh, nutrition is like look, looked after and also a lot of the diseases can be prevented if there is access to clean water for everybody and then the third journey is transition of uh, usage of fossil fuels in our world to clean energy and he's also asking uh, you know the big big investors to stop investing in businesses that uh, you know are still following unsustainable practices and stuff like that so these are like the broad three uh, step journeys that he's given down but on a practical note if you uh, see um, all the steps that we can take i think we have like a, a question asked and i think we can discuss in detail when we uh, when we reach that question Okay, so uh, I think we will go into the next question, maybe something very related to this. Is there actually a relation between spirituality and nature? Or is, I mean, is nature a better way to experience God? The link between environment and spirituality. We should not think of an artificial link between spirituality and uh, between environment. Both are one and the same reality. God revealed himself to man in nature. God spoke to him effectively through nature. And with the arrival of Jesus Christ, this speaking or revelation became full in human form. And Jesus taught us that the Father and I are one. In the same way, all that is in this world where the Father is present, is part of us, and our relationship with this nature is one. Unless we are deeply rooted in this nature, we cannot be rooted in God. And if we are not rooted in God, we cannot be connected to each other. And so it is one connected and integral reality, and not just uh, like links in a chain linked to each other which can be separated these are, are inseparable reality yes uh, so i think we bishop was very clear on that we are we are connected it is i mean i don't know i don't think there is a difference between uh human humans and we are together the lord created us and we definitely have the responsibility towards nature as well so rose uh you would like to add on something there yeah, so um, like in Genesis, how we all have read and we know the story of creation, God created and he's made us stewards, actually, you know, even though he's told us that, you know, we can um, use the earth, it does not mean that like how in the earlier video, Bishop said that we, we cannot, we don't have the rights to subjugate it. Like, yeah, so we have to use the resources and everything which is given to us as a gift in a responsible way. And there is a direct link between, yes, spirituality and, you know, uh, protecting the environment and for nature. Because we, we see God in everything, like how we see God in another person. The plants and the animals are also created by God. So, 
if if we say we are believers and if we say and if we proclaim that i i believe in god then you cannot just kill an animal or treat another person or nature you know harshly so use resources but in a responsible responsible way and also uh, you know allow or create an environment for the resources to replenish so that it will be there for the coming generations also to come so we have to always remember we are not owners we are never the owners we don't any we don't own anything over here and we are only stewards so uh, when we have that thing clear in our mind like you know we cannot destroy someone else's property so this this does not belong to us so yeah i think there's one other aspect to that also when it comes to environment and spirituality at least something personal to me is that so i uh, live and work in bangalore and there is just this there are there is a garden of buildings you know everywhere that you see you see a garden of buildings in everywhere it's all man made structures and yes we do have greenery we do have parks gardens all of that is there but it's very limited compared to where i am right now in my hometown in kerala where there is much more greenery there is much more of open spaces and open fields you know out there so for me i being someone who sort of sits in office uh you know it has uh, working working an eight hour shift and sitting inside indoors 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 for me someone who's sort of experiencing these outdoors after a long time technically for a first time is a huge difference you know and uh, i think the experience when it comes to environment and spirituality the experience also matters wherein it's undeniable when we go to a church instantly we are one step closer to experiencing the presence of god but something which another form of experience which is sort of uh, not that much pe- people may be not be aware of such an experience is simply taking a walk with nature simply take you know just uh, listening to the birds chirping or listening to the normal sounds that nature has you know that in itself like i'm personally sure i go for a walk every day there there is a difference and if at all we choose to be consciously aware of god's presence as in when we are maybe taking a walk or being a part of nature i'm pretty sure we would definitely be able to do so because god is he created this nature and he's also present in uh, you know our surroundings in the environment so yes definitely and uh, i think it's all about the experience when you experience that presence you will automatically start to conserve it as well you will get that responsibility yes so we'll go to the next question john so the next question is about the connection between capitalism and environment how, how harmful it is to the environment does capitalism destroy the earth i would think it is wrong for us to subscribe to any ism and be part of it or to uh, blame another ism whether it be capitalism or communism whatever be the ism that we can isms that we can think of they are not solely responsible for the degradation of nature and of environment every one of us is equally responsible for it when production and economy becomes selfish and not need based not to con- uh, born out of consideration for others it becomes destructive it destroys the other person it destroys nature it destroys relationship so instead of talking about capitalism or communism we need to think about god nature and ourselves we are one okay uh, i think uh, something very related to this i was watching a video some time back about from uh, by ben shapiro a very famous um, speaker no i think he went along the same lines that he was saying uh, that capitalism i mean stopping he he is from the us you know the, all all of us know that us is a capitalist country uh, so what he was trying to say was uh, uh, capitalism is not the reason why maybe not the main reason why the environment is getting destroyed but rather uh, if you look at it in a positive way there are a lot of technology there are a lot of scientific research which is actually helping helping people to conserve mother nature as well rather than blaming capitalism 
for what is happening to the environment. Let us try to take what is good in capitalism and use it for the environment. I think that is something which I could add on over there. So Rosa, anything more? I agree with you, Neil. Yeah. So even in the Bible, wealth is not seen as a sin. You know, acquiring wealth is not seen. Uh, I mean, I, I don't believe it as a wrong. It's what matters is what you do with it and what you don't do with it. So we are given more. If some people are given more, then you are expected to give back more. So uh, if we focus on that, if the people focus on that, then a lot of problems will be solved. Like capitalism is not the problem. It's the capitalists, like the few people who, you know, uh, who are greedy is the problem, like which is leading to unequal distribution of wealth. So wealth as such is not a sin. What you do and what you don't do with it is where the problem lies. So. Yes, yes, definitely. And yes, so we'll uh, go to the next question and uh, find out what, what the bishop has to sell us. So when we uh, fail to care for creation, uh, what impact does it have on our relationship with ourselves, uh, for others and with God? Does this affect the church or does the church also become part of the destruction of the environment? The church is not a society that is isolated from humanity. We are all part of that sinful humanity and so the effect of all that happens in the society will be there. We are striving towards perfection, that is to reach Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. And so, as long as we are part of this selfish world, its impact will be on us. And therefore, we cannot say that the church is above mistake. We do make mistakes, but we are trying. We are on our way to perfection, and we are trying our best to be united with God, so that we can be united with our brothers and sisters in the larger sense. And our brothers and sisters, as St. Francis would say, is the entire nature, the stars, the moon, the sun, the birds, the animals, the trees, everything in it, our brothers and sisters. And the church is conscious of this, and it is trying to... I think there might be a technical snag. Okay. Okay. Why? Why don't we just uh, discuss about whatever Bishop told? I think. I think, uh, I think what the Bishop was uh, in favor of, you know, he, I think he was saying that there is definitely an impact on our relationship, you know, especially uh, the church and the relationship with others, with God, with the earth. The environment needs to be taken care of. That is a necessity. It, it is a very significant concern. But um, again, when we, if, if we were to talk a little more about that, what what would happen if we fail to take care of creation? I mean, does it, re does it really have an impact? Like at least, uh, is, there, is it only long-term impact or is there a short-term impact? What would you say, Rose? There is a short-term impact as well. Like, I mean, may, maybe when we grow old, we see the consequences of the actions. So, like, uh, we are still suffering through the, you know, consequences of all the things that happen during the Industrial Revolution and, you know, all, and still. So, our future generations are also going to be affected. And, uh, you know, uh, the generation before our parents and our parents, we are going to be bearing the brunt of the actions of them. And when we see our next generation suffering, obviously we are also going to be guilt-ridden and we are also going to be suffering in our old age. So like it, it's no more long-term, like we've lost that time now. Like it's, we've, we're almost kind of like too late. So it's real and we see the effects of climate change, so many extreme weather events and uh, unpredictable, uh, events all around happening, which is affecting our food production, which is affecting our public health systems. 
and uh, so many other things so it's no more long term like yeah we have to hurry up and and now to we have to like start uh, preparing ourselves to you know uh, adapt to the consequences which is like we can't run away from you know uh, because some uh, effects are like happening right now and we know for sure will happen in the decades to come so now to we have to you know equip our uh, uh, governments and like all the countries to adapt to the predicted upcoming situations it's a very yes. uh, yeah not a very pleasant situation to be in not a very uh, a pleasant state the earth is in right now but hopefully we can take action soon enough i'm hoping the technical snag is resolved if not we might have to move into maybe the next question okay yeah i think i think the snag is resolved yeah maybe we can listen to uh, the bishop's answer once again uh this the same question the previous question if we can listen to the listen to bishop's answer once again apologies audience india is known for this okay not taking <laughs> network issues not putting the blame on india but yeah you can hear some insect from somebody's they are also part they are all part <laughs> of the show they are all part yeah, of the show because it's environment it's about nature so exactly we were sad that we couldn't do it outside but then yeah we have a lot of insects and animal sounds coming in during the show as well <laughs> i think it's from johnny said it's planned neil it is not yeah. not just there it's planned it's yeah only because it is the session on environment so we need natural yeah. sound effects exactly so you you asked the insects to come into your room because yeah, it does not yeah you kind of make it sound like i live in a zoo of some sorts which is not true but uh, yeah that's that's yeah Uh, no i wasn't saying a zoo but sort of a jungle i was there two weeks back yeah ah okay mm -hmm. it's good no yes it is it is definitely good we, we no, went to a place yeah, yeah the rose the difference was my home was a home and then upon the arrival of certain beasts it became a jungle there's a difference okay you know? so, <laughs> so um <laughs> Uh, so okay, uh, i think uh, i think we'll go into the next question the I next question we'll discuss yeah. about that yes yes can we go to the next question okay uh, i think i think the next question is about something which you know which is a really really interesting terminology that pope francis used and it's something called integral ecology so integral ecology links care for people and care for god's creation now how is our concern for our fellow human beings related to our or connected to our concern for the environment yeah i, I think i think while the team takes yes. care of the technical snag maybe we can uh, so i think integral ecology to put it very simply is it is a combination of protecting nature and you know combating poverty both has to go hand in hand it is concern for the poor you know effectively addressing and combating poverty alongside protecting nature so let's listen yeah. to what the bishop has to say Neil, did you get a chance to read Laudato Si? Yeah, sort of. I've read it a while back, uh, and yeah, I did go through it before coming for this episode a little bit. But then, yeah, I wasn't able to go go through it thoroughly. But then, yeah, I have read it once. I think two years back, two years, one year back. I'm not sure. Yeah, 
So, yes, I mean, I mean, his, his timing for bringing this encyclical out was just, just perfect, right? I think. Yes. So, yes. Volume. I think there's an audio issue there. Yeah, I don't think we are able to hear the bishop. Mm -hmm. Apologies, audience. This is a day of technical issues, but uh, I think I think it's a it's a correlation wherein you know maybe the nature is reminding us to disconnect once in a while. You know, we get back to nature. You know, please tell me we can hear the bishop now. Uh, yes. Yes. Launching in the movement, what we need is develop the things at the We have an example of things to ask, am I my brother? When this attitude goes in us, when this attitude continues to guide us, we become totally unaware and not conscious of the presence of other beings, other persons in this world, and eventually we forget God himself. And when we forget God and our brothers, we surely forget nature. And everything becomes for us a means, or everyone becomes for us a source of amassing for ourselves, cutting ourselves off from the world reality, or from the whole, whole, rea whole reality, and we become selfish people. And therefore, the first thing that we need to do is this change of attitude. And then also, take up relating with others so that we become relevant, we become meaningful and we become alive to our brothers and sisters, to the people, to the Lord and to everything in this world. Yes. I think what Bishop was yeah, start, uh, yeah, yeah, starting was a little uh, inaudible, but uh, one of the main things which the bishop highlighted in that starting uh, sort of uh, statements was the very famous uh, statement which I think uh, Cain uttered to God when God asked him about his own brother Abel, am I my brother's keeper? So I, I think uh, one of the things which I understood from the bishop's answer to this question was this mentality of or this this growing culture of use you know use or to abuse or just to seek you know maybe people and even the environment as something like a means to achieve an end and especially a selfish end you know amassing the wealth or you know cutting cutting down trees or deforesting uh, the face of the earth for getting new structures in extending boundaries of our lands, of our properties. So that's one of the themes which I think the bishop addressed there, that culture of use or abuse. Yeah, I think uh, something else I wanted to add in there was, uh, I think a lot of us have a tendency to, you know, settle in cities, right? Uh, and uh, in spite of doing that, we talk about overpopulation as well. So uh, one thing that we have to realize is that uh, you know, I think the world has a lot of space left, but then everybody is getting cranked up into this one place, which is now nowadays known as a city. So uh, I think uh, like how we have to be responsible towards the environment and towards the place, we have to be concerned about where we live as well. So are we, I mean, this is not something which, which maybe might be practically possible to a lot of people, but then I think a lot of us, if possible, I think it's, it's, it's time that we start relocating as well. Maybe, maybe not immediately, but, uh, I think it's time that we start relocating to villages or places where, where population is less and maybe try to, uh, maybe try to, uh, start new scientific methods over there which which does not harm the environment i think rather than making a city a, a place of place of pollution and making it a hub of pollutants i think it's time we start distributing our resources not just our natural resources but even the human resources have to be distributed equally i think that would help a lot in in conserving the environment and and this this concept that pope francis is talking about Yes, Rose. Uh, 
So one of the main reasons why people migrate to the cities is because of lack of opportunities back in their homes, and uh, I and especially with regards to uh, you know the agriculture system, and our uh, and in our country our supply chain is like so uh, you know messed up that farmers hardly get anything, and uh, every everything is taken up by the middlemen and uh, the main companies who procure from them. So which is why at least uh, you know the old people stay back in the villages and the youngsters all migrate to the cities as uh, laborers and another reason because of cheap labor here the people in our in in especially like if you look at kerala now the people living here actually don't want to work because uh, and 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 some of them even, even if they want to work they're finding it hard because there is cheaper labor labor available from other states because of which like there's there's a lot of like you know a little bit messed up happening here as well so a lot of things can be corrected if people have that long term like that vision that uh, um, everybody should benefit from an activity that i'm doing it's not just for my family and you know uh, amassing wealth and you know stocking up riches for my family and my children if we all think about our fellow human beings also when we do even a small activity uh, the way we do it itself will like change it's all about like how it's all in the perspective and uh, you know, how much that, that brotherhood feeling that you know we want to live with and spread like yeah. got that rose yes okay i think uh, we'll go into the next question and the next question is uh, very much in line with this uh, we always say that resources are drying up because of population explosion so uh, should we care for the for the nature or the poor or or what exactly do we do we take care of in this situation or is there actually something called population explosion even so yeah. the resources are drying up in the world and so should the concentration be on population control or not the resources in the world are definitely drying up it is not because the population is growing but because of the indiscriminate use and exploitation of all that is in the nature if our activity of production if our economic policies are guided by utility and usefulness for the whole world for whole mankind this exaggeration will not take place initiative of concentrating on population control or uh, instead of move, launching movements and packages what we should look at is a change in our outlook towards reality and here what i would say is every one of us need to be bold enough to point out to what is not good for a humanity the young daniel who walked away from the trial of susan saying i do not want to be guilty of this innocent blood since he knew that he cannot make an impact at the scene of trial he just got up said this sentence and went away but his courage to stand up and say that sentence made the whole assembly rethink they called him and he became the judge the entire scene was changed and justice was established the guilty was punished and the innocent was released when every one of us have this same concern and when every one of us is able to stand up like this not for one particular movement or uh, um, an event but for whole integrated life we will all be safe nature will be safe god will be manifested and all will be able to live in peace and love as the book of isaiah says the lamb will lie with the lion Yes, Rose. You can add on. So, uh, agreeing to what Bishop said here, overpopulation is not like the main reason. It's the indiscriminate use and exploitation of our resources by a small group of people. Because, like how uh, you know, our uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, 
like there's enough over here for everybody's need but there will never be enough for anyone's greed because greed is something that that is non stop and you know that's the situation that's happening now so like instead of focusing and bringing out policies and everything on overpopulation like our focus should be on equal distribution and focusing on providing what people actually need and uh, focusing on changing people's uh, mentality of using only what you need and instead of you know creating so much of wastage and all that and another thing was um like with with the countries that promoted you know contraception and control their population growth they are not suffering like they the majority of their population is retired people like old people and uh, you know young people from our countries like our country is going there and filling up you know their jobs and their vacancies so they are going to realize the folly and the number of children is a decision taken by a couple after prayer and discernment so the focus should not really be on overpopulation and uh, church has told no to artificial contraceptives but there is always a uh, periodical abstinence or you know the what is called as natural family planning which can be used for spacing and things like that and it's up to the couple it's a decision between the couple and the and god uh, after they pray pray and discern so yeah yes so i think we have a very interesting question coming up johnny would you like to ask that so yeah i think the next question is yeah pretty interesting it's about it's about something which is an integral component of almost all our celebrations especially i mean there's no especially it's pretty much there across uh, whichever state that you take in india uh, especially okay especially kerala i would say kerala uh because i hail from there i'm talking about firecrackers firecrackers when we use firecrackers for celebrations especially i recall so many christmas high masses so many new year celebrations wherein yeah there is so much of joy pure joy at causing this intense sound pollution but there is so much of joy <laughs> that which we derive from it okay there is is air pollution as well but especially in kerala you know using the firecrackers what what does the bishop have to say about that caring for the poor we cannot take the poor and uh, environment as two separate okay. i think that might be a different answer yeah it's the next video yeah it's the next video banning of firecrackers will it help definitely banning of firecrackers will help to an extent in uh, removing certain amount of pollution from the earth but we should remember that these firecrackers or fireworks that are used on occasions are not the main main pollutants in this world the industrial smoke that covers the sky and fills people's lungs is number one enemy of the environment the industrial waste that pollute our rivers the deep mining that destroys our drinking water sources and contaminates them these are all doing more harm to humanity and to nature than these firecrackers now i'm not saying keep on fire, using the firecrackers no but they are a great much less threat than many of these industrial and selfish activities so we need to control all these we need to put a cap on all these things so that we use them as they are needed and not just for amassing or for entertainment this pandemic has shown us that a lot of people suffer from respiratory infections and we also have heard from experts that there is no treatment or proper vaccine for respiratory ailments and industrial pollution contaminated nature is only going to cause more and more respiratory problems 
Yes, so I think he was, um, he made it very clear. And uh, yes, so I think uh, there are definitely more, more other, other different pollutants in the, uh, in, in the place that we live in. But yes, firecrackers can cause cause pollution. But then I think the answer to this is how much are we using it? What are we, what exactly are we using this for? Or, or are we using this to just to, I don't know, show off? Uh, or uh, what exactly is the purpose? I think, yes, definitely we can have fun as a child and somebody who's had a lot of fun with crackers. Maybe not a lot, but then yes, it is fun, definitely. But how much do we use it? Uh, or do we actually have to use it? Is there a necessity to do this right now? And yes, uh, I think one of the uh, main venues that firecrackers are being used is I think in a very cultural context, especially when you look at, look at the place of Kerala, uh, either it is for uh, for a palli pirinal or for a for a ulsavam which happens in a temple i think this this is very very much used and it is very much part of the culture as well so uh, uh, to be honest i was a person as as a child i was a person who was not very uh, for uh, these these sort of celebrations but then later on i i came to understand that these celebrations especially when you look in the villages and all i think these are the only source of entertainment for people over there I mean, I don't think people can live without entertainment, or they need some some venue to celebrate, right? So uh, when you look when you look at the history of 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 Pirinals, I think I think the history goes up to where where it was a, it was a village celebration, not just a celebration of the Catholics or or the Christians. It was a time of the year when everybody in the village came together and had a lot of fun. It was a joyous occasion for them. So telling them that you cannot have crackers or you cannot cannot do this for that one sole celebration that they have in a year would be, I think, a little cruel. So yes, definitely, yes, we have to accept that uh, it does cause harm to the environment. But then I think we can be a little bit considerate and, and try to figure out how we can do it or or maybe uh, try to figure out other methods in which we can, which we can uh, not pollute the environment rather than judging or condemning people for, for br burning crackers. So yes, Rose, would you like to add on? Um, I have uh, been allergic to firecrackers from my childhood and when I was living in Mumbai during Diwali season, I my family used to pack our bags and go to some hill station far away from the city because all of us used to develop uh, cough and a lot of uh, allergies. So, I, so because of that, I would not agree to you, Neil. But, uh, but another thing that I would like to say is yes. From uh, the historical point of view, Perina used to be like that. Ulsavams used to be like that. That was that used to be maybe the only uh, sort of celebration or function that brought people together and all that. But now, people, everyone, everyone has smartphones. Everyone's glued to TV. Everyone's got, everyone's quite busy. And uh, now, Ulsavam and Perina is, is often not like that. So and uh, you know, people uh, people. There are people who have allergies, so you have to like you know we have to be considerate. And bursting crackers to a small extent is okay, but uh, you know the kind of extra uh, you know the show this thing that goes into it and the the lacks of amount that often is spent just for firecrackers is like yeah I I think it's avoidable. So but another thing that I'm happy about is uh, in a lot of the uh, temples and uh, churches now they are not bursting firecrackers and they are trying to uh, you know uh, keep other forms of entertainment and uh, things like that and activity uh, hosting uh, like uh, organizing programs to entertain the people instead of this and often it's just very short like you know like a like a Vedic cut of just like five minutes and everything's like but uh, in my childhood, I remember it used to be like it used to like probably go on till like 20, 30 minutes, and like you'll walk back home after the big mass, and you'll reach back to your grandparents' house, and still like that you can see like the noise. And, and I used to be like I was someone who was never a fan. So yeah, yeah. But if we can blame game, it'll it'll like you know go on and on. So this is like not the main thing. Like how Bishop said, there's a lot of other things that is happening on a 24-hour basis, which is a main problem. But yeah, this is like not unnecessary. Yeah, I think uh, one thing I can add over there is like, you know, I think I, even I was scared of the big crackers. 
like when it used to burst, I used to shut my ears and sit. Yeah, so I was also scared of it. But then, yes, I was just giving a different perspective to it rather than uh, people going directly against this. I think we can we can think about it as well. And yes, and in situations where we can avoid it, yes, definitely we should avoid it. Yes, John. Jay, yeah, just a quick word to our audience. We are, please do put in your questions as well. We will definitely reach out with the answers. We'll get back later. And again, uh, as you know, due to technical issues, we tried reaching out to the bishop, but clearly the network is pretty poor in that part of the place where he's located right now. But then definitely we'll get back to you. So maybe we have a last question post, which again, I think our audience has posted a question as well. Maybe we can sort of talk about that as well. So I think, Neil, the the last question, that also is an interesting yes. question. Yes. The, yeah, Rose, you have yes. something to say? Did, did we miss a question? Because we yes, have a question. Yeah. Did we miss a question? I think we, I might, think we have one more question. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not sure if we missed it. Yeah. Maybe we can cover that later. Okay. So yeah. if we missed it, we can we can we can do upload it separately or do something else about it. Okay. So I think the last question is the question I think everybody was waiting for. It was the question on our title: Will Jesus be an activist right now? So yes, straight away to the answer. If Jesus lived today. Would he be an environmental activist? I think he would never be an activist because he had a very clear mission that is to make the Father known. He was able to say, the kingdom of God is at hand. He preached love. He did not compose any slogans. He did not give us any movements. He was not an activist, but he was one who transformed. He did not ask us to start movements, but he asked us to love without borders, to serve without looking at the reward, to be available without looking at the people to be at the service of the poor, the hungry, the thirsty, the illiterate, the prisoner, the sick, and all those in need. For him, that was wholeness of life. And if he were to come today, he would not launch a movement. He would not become an activist. But one thing probably he will do is he will make a few more whips like the one or even stronger than the ones that he made that he used at the cleansing of the temple in the gospel so that he can effectively cleanse our system you know that was a very interesting answer <laughs> about yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah, so you can put in your ideas so uh, I I also kind of agree uh, because uh, Jesus didn't care about like this is the social system that they were in like he what he cared about was justice kindness love and like when when that is in place you know everything else will fall in place like then we would not have this exploitation abuse you know in in discriminate like unequal distribution of wealth and you would not be in this mess so yeah what jesus cared about was loving others as and you know do unto others what how you would want them to do to you so like that when you relate to others and live when you try to put others in uh, like when you put when you try to put yourself in others shoes and you know be kind and considerate and uh, you know be in relation with god and let his love fill you and then you be the channel so when that is like in place everything else will also in time fall in place because we have created a mess so as we say sin there is always consequences and we cannot run from them but we will be stronger to bear it and yeah so like that I was just quickly thinking about Christ being an environmentalist. So quickly, this scene comes to mind wherein 
he was preaching to i don't exactly remember whether it was 5000 or to 7000 i don't remember but there were those thousands of people who were listening to jesus preaching and then i think it got a little late and then jesus told his disciples you know what i'm not going to send them uh, home empty handed you get them food and then you know the bread was multiplied and you know given to everybody there now in modern day scenario if you imagine this im- imagine like this huge meadow or this like park and jesus is there in the park and he is preaching and imagine distributing food like tetra pack juice and uh, a sandwich and bites and all of these uh, to all these people thousands of people gathered there in that park now when we read this passage in the new testament it goes on to say that the disciples later collected 12 basketfuls remaining you know of the remaining food after the jesus multiplied the bread and after everyone finished having their fill you know so i was just wondering whose idea was it he could have gone waste or i don't know nobody need to have bothered about uh, the remaining in all of that i mean but i'm pretty sure jesus was like so peter what do you propose to do about uh, collect it so uh, i think uh, i think the disciples the the brain behind you know uh, collecting the remaining and sort of uh, and again in those days obviously if uh, that was not collected i'm pretty sure it would have again turned into litter on that meadow or on wherever they were sitting so clearly i think that is one miracle which i see christ being a subtle uh, but a very clear environmentalist right there you know looking to uh, again saving food right there not wasting food so and uh, we yeah, we have uh, yeah john can i just say that uh, the food would have been biodegradable so i don't think it would have done any harm to the environment ah so you are for wasting food that's what you're yeah, not for wasting food, got it got it yeah, just, just, christ is very just, proud just, of me just making that clear okay got it yeah got it yeah. <laughs> i i hope your mom did not listen to that you're not getting dinner you know so yeah <laughs> yeah cool but then, yes definitely that's that's one example that we can look up to don't waste food i mean even Absolutely. if it is degradable or biodegradable i Absolutely. think uh, in the light of that we have a an audience question as well yes so uh, maybe we can have a discussion on that so uh, the question is from jo- joycey jos uh, we have all struggled with waste management for a very long time any tips on that rose maybe you can take that question we are very wasteful people and we you know we often end up buying things that we really don't need based on some you know like now this sale is going on because of puja and like we're tempted with commercials and ads in the paper in the tv in the phone and we are tempted with people for you know wearing new stuff and showing off and so we often end up buying a lot of things that we really don't need and and also with uh changing fashion like you know we we are shy to use like our old clothes we are sh- I mean, we are, uh in olden times and all at least between siblings there used to be sharing of clothes but now you know even that is like mine yours like that and then if there's like a small hole then you you like you don't do anything about it if you put like so first thing is like try to reduce the generation of waste that itself like will so, uh, you know solve a lot of problem try to repair as much things as you can try to reuse chair and uh, you know um, what do you say and with uh, regards to biodegradable waste even if it's even if you live in a flat we can all have like a chotu uh, you know what is that Sm- uh, we this curd small cute bucket is there you know? so i've seen a lot of my friends who uh, that uh, what which brand is it like white and blue color are milk anyways so anyways we buy a lot of uh, food stuff in like small plastic buckets and all so like that choto size also um, makes little bit of uh, whatever kitchen waste is generated we can make compost at home only and uh, you know in our balconies and this thing we can all start farming in the lockdown time everybody started farming every all the farmers and all the people have like reawakened tomatoes and uh, whatever if you have place for creepers then you grow creepers otherwise small small plants like that 
so that's like biodegradable waste like that only and then with regards to okay one uh, because it was asked by joy c like for all my female friends watching uh, i stopped using sanitary pads 2 years ago and i have been using menstrual cups so i have stopped generating waste because of my periods like 2 years ago and i know i have you know prevented the generation of at least many kilos of waste and i have saved a lot of my money also and now i try to spread information and promote cups as much as i can so yeah that is a suggestion that i would give to all my female friends watching and uh, a lot of people have uh, you know uh, converted or switched to it so you have a lot of youtube videos you have a lot of blogs written by a lot of people and there's also uh, uh, and i'm there so if you have any personal doubts or Uh, any worries or anxieties related to it, you can reach out to me i will explain how what helped me transition so sanitary waste can be solved like that and uh, plastic uh, you know use cloth bags uh, carry your bag always keep a bag in your scooty in your bike in your dicky car and uh, you know or just if it's few stuff carry it in your hand and bring or just wrap it in as in wrap it in newspaper and bring like don't Uh, if you tell them give me in plastic bag then they will also be forced to stock plastic bag in their shops when you are ready to, when all the consumers say are it's okay i don't want are and then if we question the shopkeepers are you why are you still using plastic bags don't you know it's banned and if you you know try to converse with them like that they will also think are oh, okay okay fine people are judging me and they'll also you know like that so as consumers we have to start demanding and accordingly the market will change like that and uh, eventually i think so, Uh, every every small action has a small impact, but it is a big deal. So, like, don't don't think like how how can I you know remove this landfill? How can I solve this landfill problem? That you'll have to slowly put uh, pressure on your local government and all that. But other than that, in your personal life, try to do small small things that you know as a person. Uh, what changes can you make? Mm-hmm. Yes. And share with your friend. I did this, so you do you want to join me on this thing? or like you know if you see someone doing something wrong like just uh, educate them yes i think that was a lot of information and you can if you guys have more questions you can definitely to reach out to her personally so or you can reach out to us and uh, we can uh, get you in touch with her with with rose okay so i think we we we've come to the end of today's show and uh, i think the person we have to thank the most is uh, our dear bishop itself he is in here with us online but i'm sure he is watching us right now uh, he, we were trying to get to him but then because of the network issues unfortunately we were not able to connect so your excellency uh, bishop uh, george paliparam will we are extremely grateful for your effort especially i mean you did a lot of you had to work a lot for this especially because the videos were pre recorded so thanks a lot bishop and yes the second person we have to thank is uh, rosemary noble and uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and uh, s- uh, spreading a lot of lot of information i mean you are you are definitely an expert in this, this area and she's she's a did her masters and her mphil in this area so thank you so much rosemary for joining us today so it was yes thank you my pleasure yeah, yeah. thank you rose thank you yes so so yani i think personally being working from home staying at home because of the whole pandemic situation there is a lot of things that i think i can do uh, in connection with the environment you know getting back to the environment and as i said i think i mentioned this earlier a very simple thing that i do is every day i go for a walk wherein i actually i actually make use of this very available and free resource called oxygen that which is absolutely not you know i'm not saying not available but i would say not that uh, fresh especially in a crowded metropolitan city like bangalore where i live and work but then for that i'm so grateful the open land and you know to to breathe in lungfuls of air and only god knows how long even that would last considering the state of things happening and you know, the climate change and global warming and all of that but hopefully up yeah, these little actions that we can uh, you know do as uh, rose suggested as well with regards to uh, minimizing you know not generating waste in the first place reducing reusing uh, things more than t- once twice as as much as we can reuse something and of course recycling whatever it is that we have at home 
and I think one thing that which even I practice on a day-to-day -day basis is separation of waste. That you separate the degradable and the uh, you know the non-degradable waste different, and you treat them differently. So that's also something which we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so yeah, Neil. Yes, I think uh, we are concluding, and I think before that, as Catholic, something else we can take is that yes, definitely there is the presence of God in nature, and uh, He did create all of this from scratch, and He just gave us this as we are stewards. We are not the owners of this. We are just here to look after all of this, and. I definitely had a lot of beautiful experiences spending time with nature, doing my personal prayer in, in, in between trees, in between streams. I think me and Johnny had the opportunity to take a bath in a stream uh, two, three weeks back. And we were one with the nature for a while. And it's, it's definitely beautiful. So I think one thing we have to keep in mind is that God's presence is there in all of this. And he has entrusted us to take care of what we see around us. So that like we will uh, ask the intercession of our our, our patron who recently became blessed. I think we are going to call him blessed for the first time. So, uh, blessed Carlos Acutis. Carlos Acutis. Please pray, pray for us. us. Glory be to the and Father, the Father and, to the Son, and the Son, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, it as it was in the was beginning, in the beginning, is now and ever shall, shall, shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. So, see you guys in God two weeks. bless it's each one of you have yes. a great evening ahead have a great sunday tomorrow and uh, catch you soon guys yes until yes. then take care this is johnny baby and and me george, george. signing off